halal. Just just a bit recap. Ah, uh, but ah uh, about what we ah uh, we have um this. I mean, our conference from the uh, from the day one until today is about halal industry. You know, so basically the halal industry there's a uh, product, services, and lifestyle. So product normally ah uh, we ah uh, definitely we call it halal. Uh, halal food, halal, that's on all halal, isn't it? Uh, well, the services like uh, slaughterhouse, uh, we call it halal, logistic halal, but marketing like yesterday, um, I forgot who uh, the speaker yesterday, marketing is more on ethical marketing, isn't it? it which is realigned with the uh, Islamic value, you know, uh, halal. And also the brand. Um, and another services is banking. Banking definitely we straight away we call it Islamic banking. We don't call halal or Muslim friendly. Banking is Islamic banking. And another category is lifestyle. Lifestyle is hospitality, tourism and hospitality. Where in Malaysia we call it Muslim friendly tourism, but in some country they call it halal tourism, and also some country they call it Islamic tourism. You know. But in Malaysia, definitely we call it uh, Muslim friendly. And another um uh, part of under lifestyle category is fashion. Yesterday, uh, from Brunei, isn't it mentioned about a modest fashion? You know, uh, we don't call halal fashion. No, we call it modest fashion. So these are the three categories: the halal industry. You know, halal, uh, Islamic, um, banking, and also the services, and also lifestyle and tourism is the lifestyle so when we talk about tourism you know uh why do people travel people travel because of leisure uh, and then business uh, business normally mice meeting incentive convention and exhibition and then they, they they travel because they want to visit their friends or relative you know and then uh, travel because of religious like pilgrimage. Uh, Muslim we go for Hajj. Like uh, non-Muslim also they have pilgrimage, isn't it? Uh, Dato, uh, Dato pun ada pilgrimage kan. Uh. and then um medical reason. Uh, we call it uh, medical tourism. Uh, in fact Malaysia is top five medical tourism destination in the world. Yeah, and also people travel because of education where we call it education tourism. And people travel because of climate. They want to experience, um, uh, you know, sun, sea, like we Malaysian, we want to experience the snow and all that. So that's how, why people travel. So travel in Islamic perspective, belum lagi ke, Dr. The slide. So travel in Islamic pers uh, perspective is Islam. We encourage Muslim to travel to see the beauty of Allah creation, you know, in nature, which reflects on the greatness of Allah. So it is encouraged in Islam. So indeed, the contemplation uh, through the lenses uh, uh, of the travelers should bring themselves closer to the creator, uh, which is Allah. When we see, uh, we feel that, oh, uh, you know, it's something someone is greater that create this uh, this nature or this this one you know so it make us um, more obedient more uh, i mean um, more committed to allah our creator so as mentioned in the quran surah al al mulk all right thank you <laughs> now is it is it Uh, doctor, I yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it's on, it's on uh, now. It's, it's on the content page, right? Okay, uh, so okay, travel. Um, go to light. Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, slide six. Yeah, slide six. Yeah, who control the, the slide, doctor? Is it you or uh, Brother Muhammad? Brother Muhammad, Brother Muhammad. All right. Okay. 
see now we are already in slide six here. Yeah? So you look at this, these are the, the content that I'm going to talk about travel industry and then uh, consumer ethics that support uh, MFT. MFT is Muslim friendly tourism. Then how cons consumer ethics can support the MFT. And then uh, number four, I map it. MFT uh, versus SDG, Sustainable Development. We are mapping. Is it a realign? And then, of course, we conclude conclusion. What are you Hello, brother Muhammad. Is it okay? Uh, yeah, brother Muhammad is trying to do. Yeah, she's yeah, going yeah. to do six. Let. Uh, So if you look at the okay, like let me <laughs> she she has a problem there. Let me open it up for you. Can you see the slide now? Okay. All okay. right. So uh -huh. okay, because she's also overseas, so having a problem juga. So oh, correct. Okay. Okay. Let, now. let me show the um the slide show, right? Ah, uh -huh. okay. uh, slide six. Slide number six. Right. Now. Number six. Right. Okay. 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 All okay. right. Okay, now, uh, travel in Islam, Islamic perspective, yeah? So, Islam is encouraged we Muslim to travel. So, so that we can see the beauty of Allah creation, yeah? So, indeed, is um, as mentioned in the Al-Quran, uh, actually, there's a nine verse mentioned in the, in the Al-Quran where Allah asks us to travel to see his creation, you know? But I just quote one, uh, Surah al muq verse um, number 15, Surah Al-Mu is a, a surah number 67, yeah? So, it is he who made the earth um, yeah, and them for you. So, walk among it, its slopes and eat of his provision and to him is the resurrection. So, it means that Allah asked us to see, to, to, to uh, you know, to see the, the, to explore the world see how his creation and then don't forget um we uh what the beauty and how great Allah is so that, that is mentioned actually nine nine verse uh, is mentioned about how uh, Allah asked us to travel to see his creation but I just take one word okay all right next okay the eight tourism uh Oh, okay, boleh lah. Oh. Ah, dia, dia lari, Datin. Oh, lari. You lari. I don't, ah, oh. I don't know. You know, because I turn next. Yang mana satu ni? Ah, yang tadi lah. Just now was uh, slide number six. I think um, you don't have to put the the slide show mode. If you put slide show, show mode, this become lari, I think. Ah. Uh. So from number six now it goes to number seven, right? Yeah. Uh, can you uh, just um, um you know make it all right? So the eight tourism sector include accommodation, food and beverage, um you know transportation, attraction, adventure tourism, travel trade, events or, or conference or known as MICE and tourism services, and of course all is. Uh, very important to the travelers. Yeah. Okay. Next. Next order. Okay. Definition of Muslim friendly uh, tourism. Yeah. Uh, so it is tourism which cater to Muslim with its products or services are in line with Islamic principle. Regardless the location of the destination, either Muslim or non Muslim countries. And the motivation or journey can be religious or general so means that we 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 travel anywhere uh doesn't matter whether muslim countries or we go to non-muslim country also no problem and the reason why we go uh travel either for religious or non-religious just for for holiday or not so as long as uh, throughout this uh, throughout the journey um the services or sharia compliant so that is um dr muhammad but to um, call it halal tourism. 
Okay, another another definition is type of tourism in compliance with Islamic teaching and not, not restricted to traveling to Muslim country uh, and with religious motivation motives only. Uh, so more or less the same as just now, but uh, this one, uh, they call it Islamic tourism. Okay, next. Next definition is Malaysian definition is about, uh, we have the Malaysian standard, yeah? It was developed in year 2015. Um, the definition is product or services in tourism industry guided by Sharia requirements that cater to or provide facilities and services for Muslim travelers in accommodation, premises, tour packages, and tourist guide. Because in, in this Malaysia standard, um, comprises of three main parts, you know, uh, accommodation, tour packages, and tourist guide. Uh, uh, I uh, involved in developing this uh, last time uh, under the part of tourist guide because I'm a licensed tourist guide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Next. So it was developed in year 2015. Yeah. So what are the objective of Muslim friendly tourism? Is to create an environment that respects Islamic principle and accommodates the culture and religious requirement of Muslim travelers or tourists. So that is the, the, the objective, the main goal, right? Yes. Okay, so MFT, Malaysia, um, uh, in short, we normally call it MFT, Malaysia uh, Muslim Friendly Tourism Service Standard. So the standard normally halal certification means that all food, ingredient, restaurant, throughout our, our, our travel, we must eat at, must have... Um, Halal certification. And then uh, Muslim friendly tour packages. So these tour packages, the friendly transportation, uh, friendly tourist guide, uh, Muslim friendly tourist guide, um, where the accommodation also Muslim friendly, um, the, the accommodation or hotel, you know, is designated uh, prayer space along the tour and all that. So that, you know, throughout the journey, uh, the travelers, they don't skip a pray. They can, if, yeah, they are musafir, they can do jama' uh, either jama' tak, takdim or jama' takhir, but at least must have the uh, prayer space. And then Islamic ethic, of course, um, you know, throughout the, the uh, journey, the tour, and alcohol-free. Adhere to modest uh, dress code. Uh, this one normally you know, tourist guide, tourist guide uh, who handle the uh, the group must be modest uh, dress code, and then uh, fam family friendly services uh, means that because in Islam uh, we have um uh, kind of the, the, um we in in even though in a family in family or um, father and mother and the children okay but. Uh, apa yang terpanggil doktor lupa pula. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yang uh, ais mayang ni tiba-tiba uh, pollution. Makin um batal ais mayang tu kita dengan orang tu maknanya uh, uh, forgot lah ni. It's considered is they are not within your mahram. Ah uh, mahram ah uh, bukan muhrim ah uh, mahram. Yes yes yes. Okay. Okay, then halal or Muslim friendly services in health and wellness. Because some people, they go to uh, the place, they want, um, if they need spa or wellness, all that must be uh, Muslim friendly. Because in Malaysia, we have um, Muslim friendly uh, wellness or spa. Yeah. Okay, next. next. So, uh, the MFT uh, market size is a big, yeah? Very big and the growth rate is about 4%. By 2030, it's expected that $324.96 billion, not ringgit, yeah, billion dollars. So, it's, it's, uh, why is this growth, um, very high growth rate? Because Muslim population growth rate is also high. Um, so, the demand is there. So, that's why... Now, even in non-Muslim country uh, like Japan, they are more towards that. In um, their airport, you know, uh, they have a prayer prayer room now. Uh, you no, know, all everywhere in in Japan because they know 
Muslim is their, uh, their big market. Okay, next. But as mentioned by um, um by uh, Dr. No yesterday uh, or earlier than that, you mentioned that actually halal is, is a lifestyle, if a way of life. If we really practice from uh, from young, from home, we we don't need we we don't really need the enforcement, you know. Everybody knows, just follow halal. So like like Japan. Because they already um more or less they already practice uh Islamic values, isn't it? In terms of um uh punctuality, cleanliness, uh so all that is Islamic value. Uh, so what they only need now is just uh, pre uh, prepare the uh, provide the uh, solat. I mean prayer pray place that is uh, and then halal certification restaurant. Uh, the rest, they are, they are ready. Okay, customer ethic to support MFP. Um, what is customer ethic here? It's fairness and honesty. Which means that, um, oh yes, just now uh, when I mentioned that customer, consumer here, is consumer refer to travelers and also the service providers as well as the local community, the place that we visit. So, Means that what mentioned by um Dato in the in Rani just now, when we talk about consumer, everybody is become consumer, isn't it? Ah, uh, so everybody has a right. So we must uh, protect our rights. Uh, so this is we just um embed the Muslim Muslim value into the consumer right. Uh, all right. Okay, so fair, fair and honest practice when interacting with business or service providers and other travelers, travelers or tourists or local uh, communities. Which means that when we interact, um, when we visit a certain place, one um, destination, so the local communities, um, and the travelers, other consumers, so must be uh, interact with a uh, fair and honest. And then social responsibility. Travelers or tourists demonstrate social responsibility that support community uh, development initiative. Where um, social responsible, um, socially responsible consumption involves considering the uh, broader social implication of purchasing uh, this decision. Here means that we have a res a responsibility to support local um, community. That's why right. in uh, sustainable uh, tourism, uh, UN, United Nations Sustainable Tourism, they encourage travelers to buy something from the local community to support them, uh, which is uh, more sustainable. So even um, uh, at least key change or any souvenirs from the local community. Uh, so... That, that is according to United Nations, UNWTO. Yeah? And then sustain, uh, the third one, I think, is sustainability, where consumer ethics also involve considering the environmental impact of consumption. Yeah, of course, sustainability, when we visit for ecotourism, we must uh, practice, uh, they call it in tourism, we call it uh, that, um, what? At least no trace. Uh well when we when we go to that place, no nobody can trace that we go that and we go to that area. Uh so don't damage, don't make any distraction, especially in um ecotourism. Don't make damage in our forest, a river, and all that. So that is sustainability. So which is eco-friendly product, we purchase eco-friendly product. Reduce waste. Don't just throw waste anywhere. You know, we, we have to bring back our waste. Uh, uh, and then support business that prioritize environmental con conservation and responsible resource management. That is uh, our sustainability ethic. Okay, doctor. So in, in a broader perspective, you know, okay. ada lagi, doctor? That's uh, uh, all together. Ah, yes. Uh, 
respect for consumer rights. We have to respect consumer rights, like what um um Dato Indrani just now. Everybody has a right, so we have to protect the the right of all consumer. Ah, uh, you know, travelers, uh, service providers, local community. Everybody has a right, so we respect their right of all parties. And then the fifth one is cultural sensitivity and and inclusivity. So we have to respect, uh, you know, the culture. And of course, um, Muslim culture might be different uh, because in terms of uh, like modest dress and all that. So the service providers, that's why service providers, they need to know what, what is the Muslim uh, friendly uh, expectation, Muslim friendly tourism or Muslim friendly travelers expectation so they have to prepare that huh? like um ethnicity religion gender and sexual orientation so we because we have what uh dr no mentioned just now we have mahram um uh mahram means that male and female we cannot uh, simply mix yeah uh, so must respect sensitivity of muslim culture that so then only muslim can go to your place okay Transparency and accountability. So ethical consumer values transparency and accountability in business. Of course, not only Muslim, uh, Muslim travelers. I think this one practice to all travelers as well. Yeah. Okay. These are the main ethic um, that support consumer ethic that support Muslim friend, um, Muslim friendly tourism. Because when these ethics portray by the uh, service providers like travel agent or uh, local community then the muslim travelers they 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 love to visit that area okay all right next order okay so cosmetic um cosmetic reflect a commitment to making responsible and conscious uh, choices as consumer, considering not only personal interests, but also broader social, environmental, and ethical consideration. So the, the, the ethics, you know. So by practicing uh, consumer ethic, individual can contribute to support MFT, Muslim-friendly tourism. So individual here mean travelers, service provider, travel agent, and local community. So it create a more sustainable, equitable, and ethical marketplace. So that 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 how consumer ethic to support. Okay, next. Okay, so how uh, consumer ethic can support? Uh, so respect the dietary or uh, for respect the uh, for dietary respect uh, restriction. So by choosing halal. You know, halal certified restaurant or request for halal meal when booking accommodation, consumer or travelers contribute to the sustainability of growth of MFT. Uh, so that because here, um, you know, there's a uh, in in market, they must have uh, upper service providers and client, isn't it? So when there is re request high request, so it is good for service provider. Okay, so accommodation of religious practice. So accommodation, now Muslim tra travelers normally they, um, they will encourage business or service providers to consider factors such as gender segregation. Because here, as mentioned just now, as we mentioned just now, uh, the mahram, you know, or in Malaysia we call it muhrim. Um, you know, we cannot simply share room with a uh, male and female cannot simply share room. So that that is must have gender segregation facilities and availability of prayer mat and ablation. Uh, Ismayang, yeah, to fulfill Muslim travelers requirement, which comply to MFT standard. Because if we if the service provider doesn't um provide this so muslim feel um very hard to travel so it we we don't travel to that place so uh, um in a loss of 
business opportunity to that place, even though the place is very, have a very good attraction. So cultural sensitivity and inclusivity also. Uh, consumer ethic can promote uh, cultural sensitivity and inclusivity in tourism experience where travelers can show respect to the local custom and tradition. So by embracing cultural diversity and avoiding behaviors that may often uh, offend uh, or disrespect local community, uh, travelers contribute to creating a welcome environment for Muslim uh, travelers. So which means that if the local community and the service providers, they provide, uh, they, they care to the Islamic um, culture, cannot this, um, especially in terms of um, a mix, um, male and female just now, eh? and then uh, the, the prayer mats, prayer place and all that. So, uh, they when they have that, they feel that uh, Muslim travelers uh, feel that we are welcome to visit that place. So it's a uh, words of mouth. When we go back to our home country or our place, we can tell our uh, our friends, oh, very good that place. Oh, easy to get halal food. Uh, the uh, the hotel also uh, very um uh, according to Sharia compliant all that. So it's create um encourage other people to visit that place. So that that is how, uh, the ethic can support MFT. Okay, next. Next author. Next slide. Slide, slide, terus ni, doktor. Doktor, uh, next slide. I I don't see the next slide. Okay, huh. and then support for ethical and responsible tourism practice, you know. So the ethical uh, consumerism in tourism extend beyond cultural and religious consideration to encompass environmental sustainability, social responsibility and economic empowerment. You see, the, the MFT is, is not only for, for Sharia only, they're beyond that. So beyond that in terms of uh, sustainability, social, economic, and environment. So travelers can support business that prioritize ethical and responsible uh, practice, which, which is Sharia compliant. So this is how this ethic can support MFT. Okay, uh, the last, the last uh, how consumer ethic can support MFT is feedback and, uh, feedback and advocacy. So travelers can uh, provide uh, feedback to business and tourism authority regarding their experiences, including uh, suggestion for improvement and area where cultural sensitivity and accommodation could be enhanced, you know, so here. So by voicing these preferences and advocating for the needs of Muslim travelers, consumer can uh, drive positive change and contribute to the growth of Muslim friendly tourism globally. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we we Muslim we don't feel scared or um, not comfortable to visit the non non Muslim place or non Muslim countries. Yeah. Okay. Next so the Okay, when we met with a um, uh, Muslim friendly tourism and sustainable tourism, the sustainable tourism is um you know the is take full account of its current and future economic, social and environmental impact impact addressing the need of visitors and the industry, the environment and host community. So this is um definition of sustainable tourism. So now we map how how uh, Muslim friendly and sustainability uh, is similar or realigned. So next um next slide, doctor. Realign. That too, huh? Slide through in. Tak bergerak. Doesn't move. <laughs> I, I don't see the movement. 
Tahu dia? Yes. yes, the middle one. Middle, middle, Lothar. Middle slide, you know, not this one. Somehow it got hang. Oh, on yeah. Share your tourism slide, ni. Uh. All right. Yeah. You can see now? Oh, oh. Not this slide, Lothar. I think no, this is not I my mean, slide. This is not your slide? Ah, uh, yeah, no. But how come it gets you the thing? Stop sharing. Almost uh, about two slides more. Uh, this one, I think. Uh, okay, next slide. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, Muslim friendly tourism, uh, we map versus uh, 17 SDG. So, so what we, um, when we map it in Muslim friendly tourism, realign with uh, 17 SDG is SDG number five, gender equality. So, Muslim friendly, we are, we are not gender discrimination, you know. It doesn't matter, gender doesn't matter for us as long as there's um, uh, the, the, of course, segre segregation of accommodation because that is according to uh, is uh, Sharia uh, law, uh, the mahram uh, concept. And then uh, SDG number six, clean water and sanitation. This one for, of course, everywhere we go, we need we need um clean water. In fact, in in Islam, we must use mutlak mutlak water, not mutanajis, not mutaw, uh, not um uh, what. Oh, mutanajis water, not mustakmal. We want mutlak water, uh, for our evolution or that, and of course sanitation, yeah. And uh, SDG number ten reduce inequality, so equal is equally. Uh, and SDG number eleven sustainable cities and communities, yeah. So we are we are promote um sustainable cities and communities. Realign with the Muslim friendly, and then um, SDG number twelve, responsible consumption. Of course, uh, we are not supposed to, um, you know, all our rubbish we cannot drop anywhere. Must be put, and then if possible, we um, we need uh, segregate the 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 rubbish and all that. You know the waste. And then SDG number 14, life below water. This one for those, for travelers um, diving, for divers and all that. So uh, life below water, they must adhere to the, uh, take care to the um, other, uh, other animal as well, eh? makhluk also. And then um, SDG number 15, life on the land. Of course, um, we... I, I don't know about you all, but I only um, when visit on the land, I, I don't go under the water. <laughs> I am not a diverse. <laughs> uh, I'm not good in swimming, yeah. Okay, so and uh SDG number 16, peace and justice. Of course, peace and justice is Islamic um uh, principles. And uh SDG number 17, partnership for gold. Yeah, this one collaboration or that, especially among the um uh, what um, providers, you know, service provider, they, they can collaborate. If service providers non-Muslim, they can collaborate with a Muslim uh, service provider. It doesn't matter uh, for us as long as the, the, the service is Sharia compliant. So this is about the uh, nine, nine of, out of 17 SDG is realigned with a Muslim friendly uh, tourism or is some country they call it Islamic tourism, some, some country they call it halal tourism. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, my, my last slide will be.
uh, as a conclusion is uh, consumer ethic play a significant role in supporting MFT, Muslim friendly tourism, by promoting respect, understanding and accommodation of Muslim cultural and religious practice. So hence, MFT services would encourage Muslim travelers to travel to travel, especially to non-Muslim countries, if the, the, the destination provides that services, you know. Okay, so I uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for your interest to listen to my uh, topic. And we hope that uh, Muslim-friendly um, tourism uh, will, um, you know, boost <laughs> Uh, as as per research, just now um a research done um in last year two thousand twenty three last year, so it's expected that by twenty thirty is a four percent um a growth rate yeah okay so we play a very important role as as a travel a travelers and as a consumer. So, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam, salam Latin. Thank you very much for your insightful presentation on yeah. mostly friendly tourism. Yes, definitely. People are now traveling. As we say, this is off COVID period. Yeah. People are seeing that this is an opportunity to, you know, go over places. And of course, uh, the most favorite places are the places that they believe they are very friendly towards foreigners, right? Regardless whichever foreigners that are traveling. So I believe one of the biggest attraction about Malaysia is that uh, we have the, you know, we have been known as the heaven of food and having uh, all the, you know, good, uh, what I call the sea, the sun, you know, mm -hmm. and the weather and also, of course, the nature. But yeah. if we were ever to, you know, destroy the environment, definitely we, we whatever that we promote or Muslim uh, Muslim travelers or Muslim friendly travelers, it would not be attractive enough. So at yeah. the end of the day, we may have the best of all these uh, situations